In this video, we're going to take care of the initial project setup. Now, I appreciate this isn't the most enjoyable part of any project, but it is unfortunately a necessary evil. So we're going to get through it as quickly as we can. I'm going to make a new directory called Koa TS Tutorial and change directory into that directory. You can, of course, call it anything that you like. And once inside there, I'm going to initialize a bare bones project shell using npm init force. So that just means I don't have to next, next, next through the process. We have a lot of initial dependencies for this project. I'm going to suggest that you just take a copy paste from the show notes and do a wholesale replacement of the package.json file. So starting with our dependencies, we've got Koa, which is our web framework for Node.js. The body parser, which is going to allow us to take the incoming information from a request. If you think about when we post JSON data in, for example, this is how we're going to extract that from that request. We've got the Koa logger because we'd like to be able to see stuff that's happening in real time. Koa router will allow us to define the paths available in our application and the HTTP verbs that must be used when interacting with those paths. We're going to need Koa 2 cores because once you get into the real world, it's most likely that you'll have something like api.yourdomain and then like www.yourdomain and you want the two to be able to interact and that's what the cores is going to give us. We'll use Redis for our storage engine. We'll cover this in more depth as we go through. I've left TS Node and TypeScript as dependencies of the project rather than development dependencies. This is to highlight that you could run TypeScript directly in production. It's not the way I do it. Um, there is a build command for this project which will create JS from your TS. So don't worry about that too much and swap them around if you don't want them as full dependencies. In the development dependencies, I've got a lot of types and generally you're going to need a types definition file for each of the actual dependencies that you've got in the project. This just makes working with TypeScript miles easier. We'll cover this in a bit more depth as we go through. Husky is a node utility for running Git hooks and we're going to use this to make sure that Prettier is run whenever we do a Git commit. So Prettier is a tool for making sure that your code is formatted without you having to worry about formatting. We'll use Jest for testing. We've just covered Prettier, but Pretty Quick is a nice utility for Prettier, which only impacts the changed files. We'll use SuperTest during testing to interact with our API to send in HTTP requests. TSGest is to enable TypeScript support for Jest. And TS Node Dev will automatically restart our development server and recompile our TypeScript whenever we make changes. Under scripts, we have build, which will build our project and convert from TypeScript to just native JavaScript. Start, make sure that we get our development server online. Test will be running quite frequently later on in the course to make sure that all our API endpoints are tested. And we've got our Jest configuration, we'll get to that a little later, and our Husky setup. So once you've updated your package.json file, make sure to run npm install. This can take a while. One additional thing I'm going to do is initialize my project on the Git. So for that, I'm going to create a git ignore and just add in some standard stuff. You may have your own choices here. Again, not every file and folder that I list inside this git ignore file will be used in this particular project. This is more of just a generic catch all for every JavaScript project that I work with. Now, as this is a brand new project, I'm going to run git init to initialize git for this particular directory. And we can do a git status GST in my case. This confirms that the git ignore is working because we don't see the node modules directory specifically. So I'm going to add all the untracked files and then commit those staged files to the repository. And just for reference, for every video, I'm going to end up with a tag at the end of each video with the name of that video. So in this case, video one. So if any point you want a reference, you can look at the tags and see what the project looked like at the end of each video. I won't show this for every video, but that's what will happen behind the scenes. 